for some reason, people just love to text me. My phone just blows up right before I start vlogging. But that doesn't matter. Hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day because that's what we do on Thursdays. We sit and we vlog. I hope everyone watched my VaporCon West vlog that I did last week. It was a little kind of thrown together. I shot a, a bunch of footage on multiple formats, I guess. That doesn't really matter. I was using my GoPro a lot, my iPhone a lot. Uh, Ruby and Matt and myself, we were just sitting in my hotel room for what seemed like an eternity just talking about everything that that came up we talked about devices and we did some beer tastings and we talked about just everything a lot of stuff a lot of really really random stuff but obviously yes i want to thank matt and ruby for taking the time out of their event schedule to come and hang out with me and sit um you know they're they're near and dear friends of mine we do hang out a lot we talk uh i mean literally daily every day we're all we're all talking constantly every day and, and they're really good friends so i love them thank you matt and ruby for doing that with me it was really really fun but it's not about any of that what it's about today is vlogging and let me get out my vlog notes for anyone new to the channel every thursday i do a long format video it's just long they usually run a little bit over an hour and we cover a lot of stuff we do shout outs viewer mails i do some first impressions of some vape gear there's a beer tasting involved there's some advocacy and that's where we're starting off at the top of the show with some advocacy so an, uh, a fellow vapor sent me an email about australia Australia uh, recently uh, banning e-cigs and not just banning them but uh, fining fee people for possessing them in Queensland Australia and this is this is a long email so bear with me I'm gonna get through this he says hi Nick my name is Stephen and I've been vaping for around two and a half years down here in sunny Queensland Australia after being a 10 plus cigarette a day smoker for over 10 years ever that's a that's well, if you're doing 10 a day and there's 21 in a pack, that's pack every two days, right? I mean, my math isn't that bad. I know my math is bad. It's not that bad. Ever since I started vaping, I've known it is illegal to sell nicotine-containing liquid within Australia. Yes, that has been true ever since I started vaping. It's been illegal to have nicotine-containing e-liquid or liquid-containing nicotine, rather, in Australia. However, it is illegal. It is legal to import for personal use. I have always brought my nicotine liquid I've always brought my nicotine liquid from the US, New Zealand, or China, either pre-mixed or lately buying PGVG containing 48 milligram nick and diluting it to my desired nick level, then buying flavor doublers here in Australia, legal because there's no nicotine. It's a pain in the ass compared to what you guys have in the United States, but I was but it was something I was happy to endure, happy to endure as I love vaping. Today, a colleague of mine who I converted to vaping after smoking eight cigarettes a day for three years. Is that how they measure cigarettes in Australia? How many you do a day? We measure, in the United States, we measure in packs. <laughs> People are like, I was a pack a day smoker. I was a two pack a day smoker. And in Australia, they are cigarettes per day. So he smoked eight cigarettes a day for three years. Found some information on our state's government website that since that said since January 2015, liquid nicotine is illegal. Electronic cigarettes containing liquid nicotine are illegal in Queensland, Australia. It is an offense under the Health, Drugs, and Poisons Regulation 1996 for a person to manufacture, obtain, possess, prescribe, dispense, sell, advertise, use, or destroy nicotine unless the person is specifically authorized or, or holds an approval under the HDPR. The maximum penalty is $9,000. $9,000! They are going to, that is ridiculous. A $9,000 penalty for vaping in Queensland, Australia. Uh, to report the sale of possession or electronic cigarettes containing nicotine, you call this government number. At first, I didn't believe her. I thought surely I would have heard about this beforehand on the Aussie Vapors Forum or in the news or Facebook or somewhere, but I checked out myself the site and sadly it's very true. Not only... Uh, that the site contains information that is frankly alarmist and clearly trying to scare people away from using vaping products. I am now a criminal for doing something that does not harm anyone else and has saved my life. That is that is the quote of the century. I am now a criminal for doing something that does not harm anyone else and has saved my life. I would really appreciate it if you could announce this on a vlog to raise awareness about these absurd laws for your viewers. This is happening right now. 
don't be unaware like I was. This is a long shot, but would you happen to know of any advocacy going on in here in Australia? I would love to support any movement to overthrow this law. I'm doubtful that will happen, but you only live once. And he abbreviated that to the more popular YOLO. Or at the very least, to help stop something similar being passed in other states. Um, and he sent me some links, and I'll post a link in the description to where you can get more information about vape possession, illegal in Queensland, Australia. As it stands, Stephen, I don't know of any uh, advocacy groups in Australia. And like I said, ever since I've started vaping, I've known that nicotine liquid is uh, not legal to import uh, pre-mixed into Australia. Um, there was once an Australian... Australian was she in Australia? She was in Australia. I want to say I, I for some reason I thought she was in New Zealand, but she is in Australia. Um, a vaping affair, a vaping affair. That's my impression. A vaping affair. Um, she did great videos. I was a big fan of hers. She used to have to do the same thing. She would import, uh, which I was wanting to send her liquid, and it was like all this red tape because you can't send Australia. Uh, liquid pre-mixed with nicotine. They have to buy the nicotine separately for personal use, then buy the flavor bases and mix it together. That is what it's coming to, and that is horrible. Like I said, I don't know of any advocacy groups uh, in Australia, but uh, you know what? I'll dig around. If anybody knows of any uh, advocacy groups in Australia, let me know in the comments below, and I'll link to it in the description, and I'll let Stephen know what's going on. But uh, but yeah, thank you, Stephen, for bringing that to my attention. You know, we get so consumed with things that affect us directly. I mean, that's just human nature. I, I am focusing on things that are happening in California, but there's things happening all over the place. Uh, Arkansas, Pennsylvania, there's bans, taxes, Oregon, Washington State is getting hit hard. So be aware of what's going on in your area and do, uh, do everything you can to stand up for it. Unfortunately, it looks like Australia has gone and, and passed this stuff without a lot of vapors even being aware of it. And that's kind of one of the things that's happening in California as well, which I'm going to post a link to in the description if we can move forward. I do want to give a shout out to Danielle and The Truth About Vaping. So she just uploaded a new video, The Truth About Vaping Emergency Alert Special Sessions. And you know what? I'm just going to put this, I hope she doesn't mind, I'm going to put this in my video right now because I think everybody needs to watch it. On July 8, 2015, vapors across the state of California celebrated the defeat of SB 140, a dangerous bill that would have classified vaping products as tobacco and opened the door to taxation that would crush the industry and put most shop owners out of business. Californians across the state made phone calls, wrote letters and emails, and showed up at the Capitol in opposition. Committee members voting on the bill heard their voices and saw their numbers and voted to amend it. The author would not accept the changes and killed the bill. This is the perfect example of how democracy was designed to work. What happened exactly seven days later can only be described as a complete and total perversion of the democratic process. The governor of California has called for a special session, which is intended for legislators to finish any remaining business that was not completed during the regular session. Unfortunately, your elected officials sometimes use these special sessions to force through unpopular or failed bills because a special session is largely done behind closed doors. Legislators do not want public interaction and give no warning about when the bills will be heard or who will be involved. Senator Leno, the author of the bill, has managed to resurrect the unamended SB 140 for this special session. This means that even after the people of California made their voices heard, Leno is attempting to force it through anyway. Leno doesn't care about what we want, he cares about what he wants. And what he wants is money from taxes on vapor products. His lies about protecting the children are now completely transparent since his bill is being heard in a special session that is solely for the purpose of finding money to solve the $1.1 billion deficit created by Medi-Cal. All they've ever wanted was the money, and now they've made that 100% clear. Without your help, these bills will pass, and the vaping industry will take the biggest hit it has ever seen. And it won't stop at California. We need everyone to stay informed and be ready to start flooding the inboxes of legislators, just like you did with SB 140. But this time, it'll need to be done with expert speed and precision. Follow Not Blowing Smoke on Facebook and Instagram, and as soon as we have contact information for committee members, 
a call to action will be posted. In the meantime, educate your non-vaping friends and family, have anyone and everyone ready to contact their elected officials, and make sure your local vape shops have the latest flyers from Not Blowing Smoke. So yeah, that's some pretty serious stuff going on. This They really want to push these through. They really want these to become laws, and they don't want to hear from the public. That, oh, is super super shady in my opinion but completely legal so what we need to do is everything we can um, follow not blowing smoke on instagram and wait for their calls to action to see what we can do in california um it's 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 a mess it's a nightmare uh, additionally as as far as even putting that video within my vlog vlogception vlogception um, i'll post a link in the description to the truth about vaping youtube and in particularly that video uh, i'll have a link in the description so you can share it um around with all your california friends obviously not blowing smoke is is a great organization and obviously danielle shout out to you you're doing an amazing job with the truth about vaping video series and i think everybody should be watching it so moving forward oh no we're still on we're still on california i apologize we're going to talk about sb2x-5 that is the new sb140 so sb140 died um, everybody voted against it, and Senator Mark Leno basically said, bah, I'm going to pull my support of this bill. We're not going to have SB 140. Vapors rejoiced. Vapors rejoiced. Seven days later, Senator Mark Leno came back with SB 2X-5. And this is the bill that's going to be get voted on, and I'm going to post a link in the description to the official uh, Senator Mark Leno website where uh, it describes what's going on um this is a new bill it's basically the remnants of sb 140 and it's called sb 2x-5 now and the bummer part about this is they're not going to allow the public to comment it there was too much public outcry against sb 140 so now in this secret session that's behind closed doors they're basically mark leno is basically resurrecting sb 140 as sb x 2x-5 and now the public is not going to get to come in and speak they're not going to get to come in and speak to the committee to voice their concerns business owners who this affects directly vapors who this affects directly they're not going to be able to come in and uh and speak and and, and speak against this and that's ridiculous so like I said, I'll post a link in the description all about SB2X-5 as well as the truth about uh, the truth about vaping. So there was another interesting article that I ran across mm, recently from, pardon me, I haven't even had anything to drink yet. Churn Mag. Um, now they do, this is like a, a vaping blog. They do this whole like, uh, what's their motto? We got vaping covered, something like that. And I'll post a link in the description to this Churn Mag article. But this is uh, a little more recent. This is March 9th, 2015, and I'm, I just ran across it right now. It says, uh, scientists shocked after testing e-cig vapor in the lab. Nice sensationalist headline there. Um, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but basically a study was published in the Regulatory Toxicology and Pharmacology that showed what exactly is hiding under e-cig uh, vapor compared to the contents of cigarette smoke. I mean, this is something that we've known for a really, really long time. Scientists ran tests on three flavors of blue e-cigs and two flavors of sky cigs. They also tested Marlboro Golds and Lambert and Butler cigarettes. I've never heard of Lambert and Butler cigarettes. Finally, they tested the ordinary room air as a baseline to use. They compared the results. The researchers specifically looked for eight toxins in this study, carbon monoxide, carbonophils, phenolics, volatiles, metals, tobacco-specific nitrosamines, poly, I'm, it's a good thing I'm not a scientist or a chemist, phenolonic volatiles, per, pa, polyaromatic, Anemones. <laughs> what? Uh, and it was no surprise that tobacco cigarette smoke was full of poisonous chemicals, but researchers were shocked to see that the toxins in e-cigarette vapor were quite similar to the normal toxins found in the regular room air. In fact, there was no major increase in toxins between the normal air and the e-cig vapor. 
Instead of deadly toxins, the e-cig vapor only contained propylene glycol, water, and small traces of flavoring and nicotine additives. In order to register, register any degree of toxicity, the scientists had to use 99 puffs of an e-cig to even get the very tiniest measurement of 0.18 milligrams. To put that in perspective, a single puff of a Marlboro Gold measured 30.6 milligrams. In a puff-to-puff -puff comparison, the cigarettes had 2,000 times uh, the, in a puff to puff comparison, cigarettes had 2,000 times more toxins than e cigarettes. Um, there you go. I wish that they. Okay, so they, they do link to the study. Okay, good on you, Churn Mag. Good on you. There's a lot of vape websites out there that kind of. Uh, copy and paste other articles and then they don't you know list sources are actually linked to the study and then you kind of go well where's the study but they actually did link and uh, to the science direct regulatory regulatory toxicology and pharmacology um, and this was actually not it was done in December 2014 but not published until March so this is good I mean thank you churn mag for putting that out I'll post a link in the description to their uh, website as well as the study uh, that they went to so um, after all that is covered uh, I do have a very full schedule of the vlog here we are gonna get to some shout outs we're gonna get to some first impressions hope to get to some viewer mails I do have a retro vaping segment planned as always music is gonna be the first thing to fall off the end when I run out of time uh, YouTube likes to just stick it to me with the music they don't they don't like me playing music on my YouTube which I get it I get it I get it. People own the music and I can't just be broadcasting it for free for everybody to hear. One quick update I wanted to do, um, and this is completely related to my YouTube channel. I've been I've been fiddling around with my video quality. I want my videos to look as good as possible. And I was fiddling around with a bunch of software uh, and I was recording at 60 frames a second. And I noticed that when I was uploading these videos to YouTube, the 60 frames a second looked somehow worse than the 30 frames a second. It was really smooth for like a second and then it would get like choppy for like just a split second and then it would get smooth again I just I think that my computer is not powerful enough to process 60 full frames per second um, I'm actually looking at getting getting a new camera I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to ditch the webcam system and go to a uh, you know like a, uh, a DSLR type of clear much clearer video I just want to have a good just want to have a good looking video that people like looking at um, was there any updates from my previous weekly review series no no nah I think we're all good I think we're all good on there uh, one thing I did want to update is people have been asking me uh, and this is really just there was one person that had asked me this those star coil heads from the star Magnus tank um, they do not fit in the Atlantis version too, so don't try. They just don't fit. They don't screw in. They don't. They don't work. They don't do anything. The Atlantis coil heads fit in the Star Tank. Star coil heads do not fit in the Atlantis tank. I, I'm trying to put together some information on what coil heads fit in what tanks, but there's some that just seem to only work with their own tanks, and there's some that where like the Atlantis coil heads will work in the Star Tank, but the Star coil heads won't work in the Atlantis tank. But the Star heads do work in that Sauce Code tank which I don't know if I've ever really talked about they do fit in there but anyway star coil heads they do not fit in the uh, in the Atlantis version too so now that we're what 17 minutes into this video what I would like to do now is take you to the beer section so is this joke ever going to get old? All right, everybody. Well, here we are. We're going to taste some beer uh, tonight. Tonight I have a beer that, uh, you know, I bought at my local Abevmo. And this was, a, this was kind of an expensive beer. So I have the Lost Abbey Agave Maria Ale. And it's got like, uh, you know, the Virgin Mary on there with like uh, hops. And like there's a donkey. There's a, there's a donkey and like crushing... I'm assuming some sort of beer making process is happening on the label of this beer. Uh, but this is from the Lost Abbey, and I have tasted one of their beers before, back when I was in my old place. Not my old, old place, but my old place. Um, and I really, really liked it, and so I saw this at BevMo, and it was about $17 for this 
for this little uh, this little beer right here, and I know literally nothing about it other than I've liked other stuff. It, I was kind of fascinated. Um, it says uh, brewed with agave syrup aged in tequila barrels, and that sounds kind of like something I'd be into. I'm not a huge tequila fan, but I do like the aged. I like bourbon barrel aged beers, and this is aged in uh, tequila barrels. So I'm kind of expecting something a little bit different, something maybe a little bit more on the bright side of the beers. Um, over on Beer Advocate, this has actually a 78% rating, which means it's a, a very good beer. Although I generally do agree with most of the Beer Advocate ratings, I don't always agree with all the Beer Advocate ratings. The description on here says, Agave Maria has hints of black pepper, sweet sugar, oatmeal, and oak with an earthy, bitter, smoked chocolate on the finish. Uh, the base beer, a new agave strong ale, was created specifically to pair with the spiciness of the tequila, adding a sweet, honey-like quality to the beer. To me, to me, that just sounds delicious. Unfortunately, this it does have a cork on it. And uh, I don't like corks. I have hashtag cork fear. The, the fear is real. So I'm going to try to get this cork out of here as best I can. People have given me different uh, tips and tricks. No, no, you hold the cork and then you twist the bottle off of it. I like to do it my own way, even though it's terrifying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, twist the cork off. Oh, God, it's so tense. I just hate cork so much. Here we go. Here It's happening. It's happening. I can feel it coming out. Oh. Okay, it's you know it's like uh, opening a uh, a roll of biscuits or something like that. I hate uh, I hate things that pop in your face or explode in your face. It's uh, it's ridiculous. Cork smells like beer. It actually smell. It has a little bit of a like a whiny uh, component to it. And I don't think I have any uh, juices that would pair well with this. Maybe, maybe some Milk Plus. Maybe some Milk Plus. Um, I might have already talked about this in the vlog. This is just one of those flavors I like and then I've been vaping it, uh, been vaping it a lot lately. Dot Mod, uh, uh, Petri Atomizer version 1.5, Joe Lit, uh, 44 mod DNA 200 set to 92 watts. Here's to hoping. Here's to hoping that that works out. So I've got my uh, beer. I've got my tulip style glass that's not uh, super clean. It's a little on the dirty side. Of course, I'm going to be pouring this over my keyboard as I always do. Last week, uh, I actually spilled it on my keyboard. Now, this beer is pouring pretty freaking dark with a nice sort of thick nitro-y looking head on there. I mean, that is a dark beer. I was expecting something much lighter. I was thinking, uh, I don't know, something bright, like a translucent-y sort of yellowy amber looking color, but this is dark. Brewed uh, with agave syrup in tequila barrels. So here you go, look at that. Look at that head, Ruby. I can drink through that like a man. It does have a very uh, sort of pungent tequila alcohol flavor to it. And I don't know the, uh, this is only a 12 ounce, oh my God. This is a 12 ounce bottle, 13.5% alcohol by volume, 13.5%. It's a damn good thing. I'm tasting this at seven o'clock at night rather than at uh, like 11 in the morning on a Wednesday uh, because I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go eat dinner. I have a cute girl preparing dinner for me right now and I get to drink this with my dinner. Here's to you everybody, cheers. Mm. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's like uh, it's like drinking carbonated tequila with hops in it, with like a a hoppy finish. I don't really get that like uh, spicy peppery flavor that they were talking about. They're talking about like a peppery flavor as well as like a bittersweet dark chocolate on the end. It does have a little bit of like honey type sweetness, but it's very alcoholic. I mean, this is 13.5% alcohol. It's very, very alcoholy. You can just, or you can, you can taste the alcohol when you, when you sip it. 
Oh, pardon me. Sheik, sorry. Sorry, Sheik. Sorry. Robin Stewart, why'd you let me burp like that? Mm-hmm. That is strong. Milk Plus is the wrong choice for that. In fact, something like uh, a little bit more bright. Hang on. Let me... Uh, this. I have some juice here that I got from... Uh, from one of my nearest and dearest friends, although I, I don't know. She's not really my nearest and dearest friend, but she is a very good friend, Amanda. Uh, this is her ember line. This is Pink Chill. I think it's going to go well with this for some reason. It, do, it surprisingly does. That the the the... The citrusy, like pink lemonade of that flavor of that juice, like brings out this like strong tequila. I can feel, I can taste like the tequila notes in my, in, like the spicy tequila notes in my jowls. It's like it's making my mouth water. This is great. I would rank this much higher. Um, it reminds me of like a sticky monkey type of situation, like from Firestone, uh, who recently just got bought. While we're on the subject of beer, uh, Firestone Walker, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite breweries, just got bought by Duvel uh, from, uh, from, uh, from, from Belgium, which is interesting. Uh, you know, they just got straight up purchase they're going to keep the brewery open and they have all these you know oh we're moving into a new age of of beer and brewing and all this like that and firestone walker is based in california it's based in paso robles california it says they'll continue to make their own beers and operate independently uh, under founders david walker and adam firestone how cool of that is a last name firestone the company signed an agreement earlier this week and the transaction is expected to close later this year um, pardon me. Uh, both Firestone Walker and Duvel are privately owned. No financial details were disclosed. Um, Duvel makes. Um, I, I always say Duvel, I've, although I've heard Ruby Roo say Duval, but I'm not quite sure. I say Duvel, but they make some good. They make some good beers as well. I'll post a link in the description to that uh, to that article about Firestone Walker getting purchased. But it's not about that. It tastes like Sticky Monkey aged in tequila barrels. There's no. Uh, like hoppiness, like American Ale IPA hoppiness, but there is like this strong syrupy uh, undertone with a lot of alcohol and a lot of that like te spicy tequila flavor. Ooh, it's delicious! And for some reason, lemonade uh, pink chill. I think it's a lemonade flavor from ADV. I'll try to track down a link. It's a Canadian company, so I'm not sure how easy it is to get this juice. Thankfully, she sent me a bunch of it, which thank you, Amanda. Just thank you. This is a delicious flavor. It's good. It's a good combo. It's a good pairing. So yeah, Lost Abbey Agave Maria Ale. If you're looking to spend 17 bucks on a very tequila-y and high alcohol volume beer, then this is the one. Uh, this is the one that could be for you. Thank you so much, uh, everybody. And now we're gonna get back to the regular vlog. I'm assuming it's gonna be shoutouts, as that's what usually comes after beer. But I'm not 100 sure. But we could possibly cue the shoutout music now. So yeah, this is something I, I should uh, I should start the vlog with this. This is I'm going to talk about what I've been vaping recently. What I've been vaping over like the last week. I've been on a tube mech mod kick, and I said this in the video you know I did with Matt and Ruby. I'm just on a mech mod kick, like a tube. Good. Those are all texts. Thank you. Oh, that was. That was just fantastic. Thank you. 
Anyway, I've been on a tube mech mod kick, and uh, next week I'm gonna have a video for this. This is the Kryptonite Vapor Cam mech mod, and uh, it's it's easily become one of my favorite mech mods. Have it topped right now with the dot mod Petrie version 1.5 that we may or may not talk about in the first impressions, but it's been just stellar. I, I like a good tube mech mod. I like the form factor. I don't mind carrying this. Like a unicorn bottle and a tube mech, it's just great. I just, I don't mind using it. I like dripping, I like I like the whole process of it. It's kind of like, you know, I've mentioned this before, but like when you used to smoke, you know, you grab out your pack, you, you pack it down, you flip it open, you pop up a cigarette, you pull it out, you light it, you click your Zippo. It's like a whole process. It's the same thing with this. I can grab my tube mech, I, can, I have a whole system. I roll, the, I roll this in my fingers. I twist it off and then I roll it down my hand and then I pop the top off and then I dump some juice in there and then I screw this back on and you go, yeah, I'm ready to go and let's vape. The performance has been great, and I just, like I said, I love tube mech mods. In addition to that, um, believe it or not, uh, we've been selling these on the Namber Juice site for a while now. I just got a Hexome V2. Just got a Hexome V2. OKL, 150 watt chip. Uh, I've been using it with the Silver Play. I took the airflow adjustment off of the Silver Play. I don't remember what juice I have in here. It's, uh, oh, yeah, it's that Vapor City sauce. Uh, Robber Baron from Vapor City Sauce. Um, it's not, it's not amazing. It's good. I mean, it's it's a nice little vape. Um, it's funny. I go through phases with flavors where I'm like, I really want something bakery. So I just surround myself with bakery flavors, and then you get too much of that. So you're like, God, I need something nice and light and fruity. This was one of those times where all I was vaping was fruity flavors, and I wanted something like bakery, like super sweet bakery flavor. And uh, I smelled a bunch of juices, and this is the one I decided to put in the tank, and it's been working really, really well. I have it set to, I don't know, 40-ish something watts. I end up just adjusting this to taste. With the Silver Play, Silver Play and the Hexome V2 has been very, very nice. I probably won't do a review of the Hexome V2. There's plenty of reviews of the Hexome V2 out there. In fact, Ruby Roo just did a very great video for the Hexome V2. Um, we sell these on the site, so I'm not even gonna say, oh, this is the best mod ever. You should totally buy it from my site. You don't, I'm not, that's just a road. It's just a road I'm not gonna go down. Um, there's plenty of reviews out there for the Hexome V2. But it's been great, it's been great. So right now, right now, you get to listen to the my horrible singing because it is shout out time. It is shout out time. All right, so the first shout out I wanna to give to Corey and Michelle. Um, I'm not gonna read everything that he sent me because it's, uh, I don't wanna go into detail, it's a little bit personal, but I do wanna give a, a big, huge shout out to Corey and Michelle. Everything they're going through with her mother and father Absolutely, uh, consider your guys shouted out. Things do get better. Keep your chin up and keep uh, keep doing what you're doing. And uh, yes, Corey and Michelle, that came via Facebook. Consider yourselves shouted out. Now I do have other shout outs that I want to do. Um, I want to give a shout out to well, this this shout out request comes to me um, from a girl named Melanie. Uh, hey Nick, I met you at the Pittsburgh Vape Convention on Sunday. I just wanted to thank you again. It was awesome meeting you, and I really appreciate you taking the time even though I was having my awkward turtle fangirl moment <laughs> okay I actually wanted to ask if you could shout out John from craving vapor and Kevin from VCC I don't know if you heard but my boyfriend's Hexome v2 was stolen that Sunday at the convention I saved up the money to buy him that as a Christmas gift so you can imagine how upset Joe and I both were that someone could steal it horrible Horrible, horrible. When the incident happened, I talked to Kevin, and he told everyone to keep a lookout for it until after the, uh, look out for it. And after the convention, took both Joe and I to the Craving Vapor booth, telling John what had happened and the story behind the Hexome. He actually hooked us up with a brand new Hexome. What they did for us meant the world to Joe, and I just really feel like they deserve some recognition. Absolutely, people like that are one in a million. John, I literally dealt. John literally dealt with me crying all over him. I was so happy. So please, from one vapor to another, these men deserve shoutouts, and it would be much appreciated. Um, yeah, absolutely, Melanie. 
you and John are shouted out. John from Craving Vapor and Kevin from VCC are shouted out. You know, and it's a shame that shady fucking people go to vape meets and steal other people's shit. God, that pisses me off. We're all on the same fucking team. Why would you steal something from another from another vapor? You know, and I hate to reminisce about the good old days, but once upon a time, you didn't have to worry about that shit. I remember going to the Vape Fest in St. Louis. This is way back in 2010. No trouble. No, no things getting stolen. No things getting swiped. If someone saw a mod on the table, they'd go, Whose is this? Is this yours? Whose mod is this? Someone left their mod. Someone left their mod. And then you go, ah, oh, shit, I left my mod. And you go, okay, well, I don't want you to lose it. People, like, cared. And were fucking respectful to each other and not stealing each other's vape shit. Anyway, I just get so riled up about that. That makes me that makes me so mad when people steal. I'm, I'm glad, Melanie and John, I'm glad you got your... Uh, I'm glad you got your stuff all uh, all taken care of. Uh, Megan, uh, I do have a shout-out request from a gal named Megan. My name is Megan, and I live in Indiana with my husband, Devin, and two little boys, Desmond and Gavin. Devin and I got married last year, and he has been an amazing husband and dad to my boys. He really stepped up for them with uh, when their father pretty much just left. We he would do anything for them including quitting smoking on june 23rd was his one year anniversary since he stopped smoking he loves watching your shows and i know a shout out would mean so much to him he took up vaping pretty quickly and has stuck with it we are so proud of him thank you for promoting a healthier alternative to cigarettes and making your shows fun absolutely Devin. that is awesome not only stepping up having a family quitting smoking uh i shout out fist bumps consider yourself shouted out and obviously thank you so much for the support and you know uh, the more you vape it just gets easier and easier weeks turn into months turn into years uh, it's it's uh, it's almost it's almost seven years for me and it just it 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 boggles my mind to not have had a cigarette in over six years almost seven years now so absolutely megan devin even desmond and gavin consider yourselves all shouted out absolutely that's fantastic got another shout out here um uh, i had one that was bookmarked uh one that was booked marked uh, Robert, okay, so this this one is actually too late. Uh, this comes to me via Robert. Uh, he says, hey, my name, uh, hey, Nick, my name is Robert, and I have been vaping and 100% off cigarettes for about two months now. Congratulations. I have converted two of my friends and my wife so far. I love your videos, and they have helped me quite a bit. I was wondering if you could give my wife, Gretchen, a shout-out for her birthday in July. That would be awesome. She has been a huge supporter uh, in our quitting smoking, and... I know she would be psyched to have a shout out. Thanks, Rob. Absolutely, Rob. Uh, Rob and Gretchen, consider yourselves shouted out. It's good to have a good to have a support system. It's good to have uh, someone who supports you in your vaping. And I meet a lot of people at vape meets as well, where the husband smokes uh, and vape, or the husband vapes and the wife doesn't smoke or vape doesn't do either but she's there to support him and alternatively there's uh, vape meets where i meet you know the wife or girlfriend was a heavy smoker and now they're a vapor and the boyfriend is just bah, i don't do either but i'm here to support my wife i'm here to support my girlfriend i think that's uh i think that's just ideal just fantastic absolutely gretchen consider yourself shouted out thank you robert uh, for sending that my way one do i have time let's do one more shout outs uh Let's do one more shout out. This is going to be a long one uh, because it's a long one. It's it's just a long one. Um, Nick, this comes to me from Timothy. Nick, I am aware of the tremendous list of shout outs you have piled up, so I'm hoping someday you will be able to do this one. My name is Tim, and I wanted you to shout out my best bud, Andrew. Andrew is on the is an on the border vapor. Meaning, while he talks about wanting to quit cigs and switch to vaping, something holds him back from taking that step. The reason I think Andrew deserves a shout out is because he is a younger single father. Without going into too much detail, 22 months ago, he was left alone with his newborn baby. With some help from his aunt and uncle in the first year, he slowly acquired full custody and now takes care of his little boy completely by himself. That alone deserves a shout out. This past week for Father's Day, his 22-month-old baby, 
Uh, and I got his 22 month old baby and I got together and got him a simple mod and I built up an extra RDA. Well, this little guy can't talk yet. I knew that he's rooting for his dad to quit smoking just as I am. I once made a deal with Andrew that if Groom Green ever gave him a shout out, he would throw out his cigarettes and give it a real chance. <laughs> Andrew does not give himself enough credit for the incredible job he has done raising a boy by himself. Absolutely. While he doesn't agree with me all the time about this, I think he's an awesome dude and he's doing an amazing job. If you ever have time, a shout out would mean a lot. Sometimes it's hard to believe compliments from the people you love. Uh, sometimes it's hard to believe compliments from the people who love you the most. So maybe if he got one from you, he might start to believe how good of a guy he is. You sound you sound like a good guy, Andrew. You sound like you're doing everything you can to take care of your boy. That alone deserves a shout out. Um, thank you for all you're doing for the vape, com vape community. You're one hell of a guy. Your humility makes me laugh because I can tell it's totally genuine and you don't have, and you don't, and you, okay, I apparently I can't, I can't read either. Uh, and you, and you, why am, why is this so, why is this so difficult? And you really don't have any idea how big of a positive impact you have on so many people. There you go. P.S. It drives me crazy that the autocorrect on my phone is always changing vaping to gaping. Yes, but uh, that makes uh, reading emails much more funnier. Absolutely. Uh, Timothy, thank you for sending that my way. Andrew, consider yourself shouted out. You know what I mean? Keep doing what you're doing. Raise your boy. There's no rules in vaping. If you want to vape when you vape and smoke when you smoke, if you're cutting down on your cigarettes, that's absolutely a win. Over time, it does get so much easier. Like I was talking about, days turn into weeks, turn into months, and before you know it, you'll go, wow, it's been a year since I've had a cigarette, and now uh, you know I have my favorite juice and a mod and, and my favorite atomizer, and I can rebuild, and it just it does get easier. And according to this pact, which I believe seems legally binding, uh, if I ever give you a shout out, you have to throw away your cigarettes and give it a real chance. Now don't, between you and me, Andrew, you don't have to throw away your cigarettes, but I would like you to give it a real chance. Um, and eventually when you don't need your cigarettes anymore, crush them, throw them in the trash and say, I'm done with you tobacco. Let's do this vape thing. Absolutely. Uh, Andrew, Tim, consider yourself shouted out. Um, that's all the time I have for shout outs right now. I don't want this to run too long. So what I would like to do now is some first impressions. <clears throat> all right, yeehaw. Well, let's do some first impressions. My chair always wants to move backward. So uh, I did get uh, some stuff. I got a bunch of stuff. As it stands right now, just a heads up to any vendors watching, um, I'm going to take a drink of water. As it stands to any vendors uh, watching, any people watching, I'm not accepting any new hardware. There are some vendors out there that have my address and they will just send me stuff. And I go, uh, okay, I'll put this in the queue. I'm not accepting any new hardware. I need to get through the items that I have before I start accepting new stuff. I feel like I need time to dedicate to the stuff that I have before I accept any new stuff. And with that said, yeah, I've got a whole fuck ton of new stuff. So pick this up at, uh, where did I pick this up? This was at VaporCon West. I got this, this is the Swoop. And uh, this comes from All About Vapor. Um, I'll post a link in the description to where you can read more about this. This is the Swoop. And it uses the SX350 uh, board, SX Mini. I'm going to have to, uh, it, the board, the, the display looks complicated to me. Um, it freaks me out, quite honestly. I look at the wattage, I look at joules, mm -hmm. standard, volts, ohms, other volts, the battery life. There's a lot going on here. So I've just been running it in variable wattage mode, just with straight up Canthal. It uses a double 18650 battery on the inside. I have two uh, Samsung 25Rs in there. The wiring on the inside is decently clean. I mean, it's uh, on a 3D printed sled, and it's got this interesting shape to it, which I don't, I don't know if I'm a fan of yet. It looks... It just looks a little bit weird in my opinion. It's swooped up like this, hence the name, the swoop, and then it kind of swoops out here. Um, you can palm this, like have the big rounded part against your palm and use it as a finger button. 
or you can flip it around and use it like this and wrap your fingers around this. I feel like instead of being concaved out, it should have been concaved in. Like the, every time I hold this, I go, I kind of wish that was either just flat or like concaved in a little bit to kind of fit the curvature of your palm just a little bit better. Regardless, it's custom machined. I mean, it's custom machined out of what I believe to be aluminum. I don't know. I'm not a metallurgist. Yep, it's metal. I don't know uh, what it's machined out of. The door hangs on via magnets in the back. There's no play up or down, side to side, which is fantastic. That's what I, I love in a mod. Um, and it's been good. I've been getting plenty of battery life, plenty of power. Um, but yeah, obviously, like all of my first impressions, I will have to report back later on with how this performs holds up in the real world i've actually been using this quite a bit it's got that spring-loaded 510 on there and it's just an easy thing especially when it has a tank on it to just grab and just use it's been good it's been pretty pretty freaking good um it does uh not it has a usb on the front but it doesn't charge via the usb it only is available for software updates from yee for updating this board it does do that thing where if you hold it like this you can see the display and if you flip it the display flips as well um which kind of gets disorienting i wish i could just lock it in one position without having it flip but maybe that is an option i like i said this just i i've just been using this for maybe the past week additionally what i have on top of here this came directly from you this is the goblin mini and i never had a goblin i never had an original goblin but i have really been enjoying this goblin mini i built it and wicked it exactly like i did the zephyrus tank and it's been wicking like uh, like crazy and it's got this airflow adjustment that you adjust there's a little lever down here on the bottom and you're not going to be able to see this but there's a big slot right here and then there's a lever on that side of the slot where you can shut the airflow all the way down this is the tightest airflow tightest airflow possible straight up mouth to lung hits turn the airflow all the way off you get great mouth to lung really great mouth to lung actually and then you open it all the way up and you just do straight up lung hits um my only gripe so far with this is you got to use their stupid glass drip tip which if you've ever used a glass drip tip mm, you just get tons of lip gunk on it tons and it shows up hard it shows up right away it's just like oh hi lip gunk i used you once and now you're covered in lip gunk it does come with an adapter to use your own drip tips but the, the adapter that fits in there is so small and weak let me get a regular drip tip just to show you. I'll grab one of my favorite. I'll grab a dot mod drip tip. These are my favorite. Oh no, this is gonna get stuck in here. I tried that already. I tried that already and it got stuck in there. So I'm just gonna grab this one from District 5. It's just a, you know, a wide bore drip tip. I'm gonna put it in this little adapter thing and I don't wanna press it all the way in there because I have a feeling it will get stuck. And you put this adapter on there and you can't really tell you can't really tell that it's an adapter but it's just so loose that if i I'll, if i yeah see ready adapters in up oh, nope adapters in up oh, nope adapters in up oh, no it's just really weak sticks and it it doesn't stay the adapter fucking sucks on this which pisses me off because I would love to be able to use my own drip tip. So as it stands, you're stuck using their glass drip tip, which actually kind of has the same weak falling out situation as the adapter does. But yeah, wow, that is really weak. I wonder if you can dry those O-rings off in there. It's held in by O-rings. There's little O-rings in there. Um, so yeah, again, 
As with all my first impressions, I do need to spend a lot of time with it to get to know the ins and outs of it, although I'll probably do a, a video on the Goblin uh, Mini sooner rather than later because it's, it's really straightforward and I've been using it non-freaking-stop. Um, got some Dragon Mouth Vapor in there. Uh, it's been really, really good. I've blown through easily five tanks since I've got this of just... You, you, you fill it up, you vape it, you fill it up, you vape it. And I'll post the link in the description to the Ude Facebook because that's all that exists is the Ude Facebook. Um, if you want to Google Goblin Mini RTA, um, so they say it holds four, okay, no, single coil, okay, or dual coil, yeah. Goblin Classic Design, height, Three mils, that's what I was looking for. Three mil juice capacity. Three mil juice capacity. Eh, three mils. So not really enough to get one person through the whole day, at least the way that I vape. Maybe if you shut this down and you're doing some mouth to lungs, you could probably salvage some more of that juice. You probably won't be tearing through it quite as fast. You'll probably be able to salvage some juice, but as it stands, I'm rocking this full wide open and just tearing, just tearing through juice. It's been good. Um, another thing that I have that I want to talk about is this box mod that has, I, it, I saw it and it, it just impressed the hell out of me. There's one gripe I have with it, but we might save that for review or I'll mention it now. So this comes from Lazy Vapors and all I can find about them is their Instagram. Lazy Vapors Instagram. They don't have a website up yet, but they do these custom built wooden box mods. And I am a huge, huge fan of wooden box mods. I just, I just like using them. I think they're so great. They have this, a very nice feel. Uh, and this is a dual 18650 parallel unregulated. So I got two batteries in there. You can see the wiring is really nice. It's all custom built in there. There's no plastic sled or anything like that. There's a MOSFET sitting right here for the switch. Spring-loaded 510 connection. Solid, it's like solid copper wiring in there. And you can see the sides. Do you see the edges, how it fits together like a freaking Lego brick? Look at that. And then there's these two little tabs on each side. There's a tab here and a tab here that you just and it feels great, it feels good. It's held on by a single magnet, but it's also pressure fitted, you know, I don't know, kind of like a Lego. That's all I can think of is that this fits together like a Lego and it's all rounded on the edges. So the top is rounded and then these are rounded. So when it fits together, you just get this like seamless rounded edge. It's, it's really, really nice. He took a lot of extra care and effort and put this in here. And even the fin on the door, you can see where he, he has, you know, it's been glued and sanded down into place on the other side. And that separates the batteries and it fits with the, with the negative swoop on the inside. I've just really been enjoying using this a lot. Got this topped with the Sapor Addy from uh, Watofo, which is, uh, you know, it's a lot like the Aeolus. It's got the top-down airflow. I didn't really do a first impressions of this. I'll probably get a, re a review done for this sooner rather than later as well. Nice deck to build on, nice airflow. Uh, I've really been enjoying it. In fact, I think these batteries in here are dying, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna power through. I just, pardon me, <laughs> I just love dual 18650 parallel unregulated box mods. And this one is beautiful. It's nice to hold, it's nice to look at, it just feels nice. And there's these holes right here that are right in line with the wiring and the switch and the atomizer. And I believe that's to kind of like dissipate the heat. To like So it's not all the heat isn't being contained inside this so that he can kind of escape through these little holes. I don't know if that works. I'm vaping it hard enough to like really make it heat up. Um, but this right here has been a great vape. It's a point, uh, 0.15 ohm dual 24 gauge anarchist. My same stupid build that I do on everything. I just love the way it performs, especially on a dual 18650 unregulated box mod.
it's been great. I got some Grim Cult Horror of Yig in there, um, and I just, I've just absolutely been loving it. What else did I have for first impressions to talk about? The Swoop Mod, the Goblin Mini, the Wooden Box, oh, Segeli 75 Watt. So this came in from District 5, which I'll post a link to in the description. This is the new temperature control Segeli 75 Watt device. Um, the only downfall of this device that I've noticed so far is that it just tears through batteries. It uses a single 18650 in here. One single 18650, door comes off, there's your 18650. In fact, both doors. Ah! Sorry, sorry, sorry headphone users. Both doors come off so you can push your battery out because the battery is just pressure fitted in there. Oh, this top one's spring loaded. Okay, well the top contact is spring loaded. It's got a nice little C-frame on there. Nice clicky buttons, spring-loaded 510, battery goes in, positive side up, and then you put both your doors back on, both your doors back on, and you're, you're ready to go, you're good to vape. There's no play in the doors up and down, side to side, but they aren't super strong. They pop off uh, maybe just a little too easily. It's only being held on by two magnets. There's two magnets holding this door on. It feels secure when you're holding it, but you can pull these panels off pretty easily. I heard that District 5 is going to be doing their own custom panels for it, which would be rad. Like if I could get two green anodized panels on here, that would be rad. If I could get two wooden, panels exactly like this on here that would be rad that would make it feel much more classy one two three four five uh, it does have a slightly mirrored display slightly mirrored display but the buttons are nice both the up and down buttons work really well um, I'm gonna make sure that this is in temperature mode I'm gonna turn up my watts a little bit no yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna max this thing out. We're gonna go to 75 watts. No, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go to like, bah. We're gonna go to like 57.5 watts, and we're gonna set the temperature to 520 degrees because that's where I've found that I really like it. Um, next week, I'm gonna be doing. Uh, oh no, I need to uh, set my resistance. That's right. Uh, 0.23 ohms. This is a nickel coil head in the smoke tech tank. What I'm doing next week on for Wildcard Wednesday is a video all about temperature control. I'm going to be doing a review of three different devices, and we're going to be talking all about temperature control. It's going to run a little bit long. I'm going to try to keep it to about a half hour, but it's going to run long. Um, and I talk about this in the video, but I've never been a huge fan of temperature control. So I decided I, to do my due diligence and really dig into it and try to learn as much as I possibly could and communicate that to you, the viewer, all about temperature control and all about these devices. So we have my temperature control. I locked in the ohms at 0.23, set to 519 degrees at 57 watts. Wonderful. Beautiful. That is a beautiful vape. Good lord, that's a good vape. That is delicious. Super good. Wow, that is super good. That is a super nice vape. In fact, I could probably turn the temperature down on this. Nice, that is nice. This is a great, great temp control experience. And you know, when I actually started digging into temperature control, I started being able to adjust my experience to how I want it. And I, you know, I'm gonna talk about this in the video, so I don't wanna repeat myself, but I was able to finally have that good warm vape with temperature control that I have been after because up until I really, you know, dug into it a lot, I was having these really weak temperature control experiences and I'm like, this is weak. I don't want to vape this. I don't like this boring, weak, piddly, stupid vape. I want something hot and warm in my mouth. Is I want something hot and warm in my mouth. No big deal. This has been fantastic. So yeah, Segeli 75 watt, it's been uh, pretty nice so far. The only problem, 
man, it destroys batteries. Tears, tears through batteries. Um, I had one last thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, Joe Lit. Oh, we already talked about Joe Lit. Yeah, still rocking the Joe Lit DNA 200. Um, I have a temperature control. I have a temperature nickel coil build on here. Um, it's wicked low. I have this set to 127 watts, and it's been fucking awesome. It's just been fantastic. Finally getting that warmth I want. Uh, let me grab this atomizer real fast. So, uh, uh, ow, 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 ow. Smacked my knee right on the desk. Uh, that is painful. That is painful. I'm not going to lie. Ugh. All right. Well, now that I'm permanently injured, uh, I do want to talk about this REM atomizer. I got a REM atomizer, and it's just a very simple three-post design, big slots for your airflow, and a chuff-style cap that controls said airflow. Um, the fella that built this for me, the Canthal Kid, put a nice little uh, fancy fused Clapton parallel thing in here. Um, it's got a little bit of a ramp up time, but it's been it's been really nice. I've been vaping it with some juice I got from Vapor ninety three Cloud Batter, that is so like almost disgustingly sweet that I can't vape it for that long. My first toot on it was delicious. I'm just like, holy fuck, Cloud Batter, this is the shit. And then, literally like my fourth toot into it, I was just over it. It was far too sweet even for me. But the REM atomizer has been nice. I like that it looks, has this very minimal, pardon me, unassuming design to it. It's very simple. Big airflow slots, chuff cap. You just drip through the top and you go. And that's the bummer part about getting cool people to put cool builds on your atomizer is if I want to fully review this atomizer I have to take the Canthal Kids sweet ass build off of it and build it myself and I don't uh, I don't want to do that maybe the REM atomizer will never get a review just because I don't want to lose this build but uh, but yeah it's been great this came to me via who did this come to me via this came to me via I'm just going to post a link to the REM Creations uh, Facebook. This came to me via Vape Fiends, but all they do is wholesale. Um, so their website is not going to be helpful to anyone that doesn't do wholesale for brick and mortar stores. But this came to me via Vape Fiends. Canthal Kid put a build on it. Um, they did give me a mech mod as well that I'm going to talk about next week. It's kind of like the uh, Dos Equis mech mod, kind of like the Castigador mech mod. We're going to talk about that next week. We spent far too long in the first impressions, but I just wanted to close it up with this Rem Addy. Shout out to Vape Fiends and shout out to the Canthaw Kid for putting a sweet uh, sweet build on this. And shout out to Vapor93 for the cloud batter, even though I can literally take four or five drags on it before uh, before I can't vape it anymore. So, as the vape layer slowly fills up with more and more vapor, what I'm going to do is uh, take a real quick break. I'm going to turn on the AC. I'm going to expel some of this vapor. And then, and then we're going to do some retro vaping. All right, well, now that I got some of that vapor out of my office, let's do some retro vaping. So I almost feel like my retro vaping is catching up to, like, current vaping. There's a lot of mods and stuff. I guess I still have, you know, plenty of mods. And this, this, is, this one I picked out is pretty retro. And I picked it out because I just, back in the day, I used to love it so much. I did two videos for this. Um, I think I might have done three videos for this. I'm talking about the Inokin iTaste SVD. Now when I first got this, I just thought it was the greatest thing ever. I'm like, this is all This is all I will ever need to vape ever for the rest of my life. It is so good. It is so great. I took it with me 
to Disneyland. I took it with me. I did a review for this inside the Vape Rev store back in the day. I'll post links in the description to my original SVD videos, but they're quite, quite old. So this was a variable wattage 18650 tube mod and you can run it in 18650 or 18490 mode and you know looking at it now this is a little janky <laughs> the whole system is a little bit janky but I'm gonna throw an 18650 in here hopefully throw an 18650 in here holy shit oh no I wonder if I have the wrong uh... nope okay yeah that'll work yeah that'll work that'll work now, with an 18650 in here, it just makes it wicked long. Yeah, look how long that is. Look at that. It's like a baton. So this is the iTaste SVD, and let's see if I can 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, on. I do remember how to use this. How, many, how high did this go with wattage? <coughs> so it did a maximum of 15 watts. Let's go back down to like 12 watts. And I'm going to put this Clearomizer on here that I was using last week because it has a, it has the Ego connection on it. It has a standard default Ego connection on it. And it used to come with these rings. And the rings were unique to Inakin. Inakin always used these rings on their devices, on, on everything. And the original MVP had it. The MVP2 had it. The SVD had it. The cool Fires had it ring with little airflow look how long that is look at that let's just compare that to a mech mod of today and you can't e i mean that is ridiculous the difference in size this little tiny mech mod compared to the giant baton of the i taste svd but i thought it was great i used to rock this with an 18650 and a cardo tank it was one of my favorite things uh favorite things ever Hell yeah, 18 milligram throat hit. And that's how I would vape. And it was it was great. I love the display on it. That little tiny, look at that little tiny display. 15 watts and then it would go back around to, to 5 watts. And there was a way to change it to voltage. Did you hold both of these? Nope, that showed you your, your ohms. If you held both of the buttons, it showed you your ohms. So let's turn this back up to 12 watts and let's vape on it. I'm so, I'm not shocked that this still works. I'm kind of I'm kind of impressed that it still works. And I I mean I put this thing through the ringer. I used it constantly. In fact, this is the mod I had when I started using my first rebuildable atomizers. I got a what was the name of that rebuildable atomizer? The Phoenix? And then there was the Fatty. And I used the Fatty on this. In fact, I have a very vivid memory of using 28 gauge Canthal to rebuild my Fatty at VapeRev. I, I was sitting there with Joe Rinker. Amber was there. A bunch of people were there. And I remember rebuilding my Fatty with 28 gauge Canthal and Silica Wick. Ha <laughs> ha! Silica Wick at at vape rev on this device this is the device i started using rebuildable atomizers on mm. you know what this this still isn't a terrible vape it's not awful it's not awful it is actually pretty nice Boy, that 18 milligram, man, I can already feel it. That really gets into your system. When you've been vaping three for so long, the 18 really, uh, I wanna put this silver play on here. See, now I just wanna experiment. I wanna put everything I can on this SVD and see if it works. Silver play, look how long that is. Let's try to turn up the wattage. Let's check the ohms, 0.2 ohms. It'll read down to the 0.2. So this is a 0.2 build. And I'm going to try to do it at 15 watts. 14, 15, 15 watts. Will it fire it? No, it doesn't. No, it uh, it gives me an error. It says low. It says zero, zero amps, which means it's not going to fire it. I have a really good battery in here. It just won't fire it. I wonder if I have anything else that will fire on it. I don't have anything built that high. Oh, I do. I do have one thing built that high. 
I have this tank that I was going to disassemble today. This is 1.5 ohms, so I know, I know it will work on here. And I do this sometimes. <laughs> I will go back and I will grab an old mod and just put stuff on it. Just to be like, hey, will that work? Or just be amazed like, wow, I can't believe I used to vape like this. But yeah, that's, that's about the length it was with a Cardo tank on there. I mean, this is what I would carry in my pocket. I carried this to Disneyland. Looks like the Doctor Who Sonic screwdriver almost. I don't know why I can't whistle. I was trying to whistle the Doctor Who theme. I know this is... Yep, that's going to fire. Because it is... 1.6 ohms! It fires and it works. Clouds! Clouds, bro, from an SVD! What? I taste SVD! I don't even think they make these anymore. Do they even make these anymore? That's the thing we have to check next. I taste SVD. Uh, Inakin still has it. Fast Tech. 36 bucks can get you an SVD. Uh, there's the Tia Vapes review for it. Where's my review for it? Ah, revisiting the I Taste SVD, and then everybody did review. Indoor Smokers, P. Basardo, myself, T of Apes, we all did Inakin I Taste SVD videos. Uh, I did mine at Vape Rev, and then I did another one uh, in my office. Yeah, they still have the I Taste SVD on their website. The I SVD stands for Superior Vaping Device. It's tube style, variable voltage, variable wattage, advanced personal vaporizer. Uh, 9,000 ma. Uh, okay, well, that's battery sizes. Um, operating voltage, 6 volts, 15 watts. Um, yeah, wow, they still sell it. And they did do release the SVT version 2, which was kind of terrible. But on Fast Tech, fasttech.com, you can still get an SVD for 36 freaking dollars. Get a little piece of retro vintage vaping nostalgia. You gotta take a really long hit. This is a 1.5 ohm coil, so you gotta take a long hit. Nope, it's just showing me my ohms. It's too low. SVD cannot sub ohm. <laughs> what are you gonna do? We all sub ohm now, or most of us sub ohm now, um, but that's what it is. It's the ITAS SVD, and holy crap, it was big. It was a big baton. And, and you know, seeing even box mods like this, they don't seem as big and intrusive as something like this that sticks up so high, especially when you get your your cardamizer on there, your clearomizer on there. It's just so long compared. Even this big box mod doesn't seem as big as this, and that's just my weird logic. Just my weird logic. But yeah, got some 18 milligram juice. I got my I Taste SVD. I'm good to go. I'm good to go for a while. This had a good, nice, long battery life. It's not terrible. It's just old. If you guys have any suggestions for what you want to see in retro vaping, um, go back through my old videos and see what there is to see. I still have loads of old mods. Anything you want to see revisited, let me know and we can throw it into the, uh, into the retro vaping segment. So... This vlog has already run long. Um, there, I believe there's one viewer mail that I wanted to get to. Um, there is one viewer mail that I wanted to get to. Oh, I can't find it, and I can't find it because it's gonna be it's gonna be too long. I can't find it. I can't find my viewer mail. I apologize. Um, I'll have links in the description for everything that got talked about, including the old I taste SVD, but that's what I got. We're going to wrap this vlog up. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. We still got a lot of cool stuff coming up. I'm going to be at ECC in August. I'm going to be at Vape Mania in September, and I'm also going to be out in Connecticut in September for a uh, for a little fundraiser. Me and Ruby Roo heading out to Connecticut just to hang out and uh, do some raffles and raise some money for uh for advocacy out in Connecticut. So that should be really fun. Um, November, I'm going to Ireland. I'm going to the Ireland Vape Fest in Ireland in November. I can't wait. I'm gonna need, I need to buy luggage. That's what I need to do. Make a note. I'm gonna ask Siri. Siri, remind me. Okay, well, why don't you wanna be a jerk about it? Siri, remind me to buy luggage tomorrow. Okay, I'll remind you. Thank you, perfect. 
now I'm going to be reminded to buy luggage. I need to buy luggage, like a checked bag to carry with me. But that's what I got. This has been the vlog. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me on the vlog. Like I said, got a lot of cool stuff coming up, hanging in there with the Mech Mod Monday, Topper Tuesday, Wild Card Wednesday videos. That's what I got. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, that's right, I'm going to vape this. Let's keep on vaping. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this vlog video, you might enjoy my weekly review series. I'll have them linked down below. Mech Mod Monday, Topper Tuesday, and Wild Card Wednesday. And as always, feedback, likes, comments, and subscriptions are always appreciated. Thanks so much, everybody.